Hi guys. Um, okay, so I am answering question number two, um, talking about certification and licensures. Um, so the first question in this question number two, uh, what is the purpose and role of professional certification? Um, so I believe that this started at um, Ball State Teachers College in Muncie, Indiana. Um, this is kind of where RID was born. Um, they had a um, they met at this teacher college, and um, after a few days, RID um, was established. So, um, at that time, um, interpreters were in the helper model, um, and so pretty much anyone who knew sign um, became an interpreter um, or was kind of pulled into the interpreting profession um, in a sense of deaf people weren't given all access that they have now to interpreters. So VRS, um, federal laws that grant interpreters, all of that other stuff, um, or all the other ways that deaf people are granted interpreters now, didn't have back then. So um, interpreters were considered helpers. So RID was established, and um, uh, the purpose for interpreters changed. So they wanted um, interpreters not only to um, be more professional and not necessarily be an, a helper, but also raise the profession as a whole. So instead of us being helpers, we're now professionals. Um, and so this is how um, certification was developed. So all interpreters were actually skilled and qualified to do the job that we're doing for deaf people. Um, so the next question is, how does certification compare with licensure? Um, so by understanding this correctly, um, different states have different licensures. Some, um, some requires you to go through an ITP. So Ohio, I believe Ohio, um, even if you have um, past experience, if you have bachelor's degrees or whatever, um, if you didn't go through an I ITP, you have to go through that process. Um, and it's... Um, included in their licensure's laws. And then South Dakota has their own state certification or state licensure. Um, and it's, from my understanding, is it's on the same level as NIC. And so if you pass your NIC, then um, you're able to interpret in the state. Um, but if you decide you don't want to take your NIC, you can take the South Dakota certification. And if you pass that certification, then you can interpret in that state. Um, Texas has the BEI, and from my understanding of the BEI, um, it is more difficult and more challenging than NIC. So to be able to interpret in that state, you have to have their licensure. I believe if you have your NIC, it does not trump BEI. So whether or not you have your NIC, you still have to take BEI. But I could be wrong about that, but I think that's how I understood it. Um, so next question is, why might a state want licensure over certification? Um, I think that this is a question that depends. Um, some states, like Florida, have no certification or no licensure requirements, but other states um, do. So from my understanding, um, it kind of depends on the legislation and um, the population in that state um, the more people who advocate and want state legislation or and are um, more active in that process, um, I guess, are successful in um, certification and licensures. However, in other states like mine, Florida, um, the reason why we don't have certification is not enough people are supporting, advocating, and lobbying for cert state certification. So, um, and specifically licensure over a certification, um, licensure can be sometimes easier to obtain versus a certification, which is um, more difficult. So I kind of think it depends on the state legislator. Could be wrong on this one. I'm, I'm actually not 100% um, sure. Um, what are several forms of certification available? Um, so RID offers or at least did in the past, offer, um, they had an, uh, from, um, so you want to be an interpreter, explained all of the um, 
past certifications and present certifications. So as of right now, you have your NIC, National Interpreter Certification. You have um, CDI, which is Certification for Deaf Interpreters. Um, and then past certifications, which um, several forms of certification available, which are not available, were like your oral transliteration or um, transliteration, um, CT, CI, Certificate of Interpreting, Certificate of Transliteration, um, those, um, which are not available to take anymore. However, I still know people who hold those certifications and are still valid. Um, define what it means to be a certified deaf interpreter. So, um, RID has a um, program or um, a test set up similar to NIC, and so you want to be an interpreter, defines it. Um, but a uh, certified deaf interpreter, exactly what it sounds like, um, a deaf individual uh, takes a test to become a certified deaf interpreter. Um, and basically there is a bunch of famous interpreters have gone viral, or deaf interpreters, um, Pauline, is a CDI, um, but basically um, the certified deaf interpreter will stand in the front, um, like uh, if they're on um, national news or just any type of interpreting uh, scenario, I guess you could say, um, but the certified deaf interpreter will be in the front, a um, hearing interpreter will be sitting either watching the deaf person or watching the hearing person, and um, the hearing interpreter will interpret what the hearing person is uh, speaking about, and the deaf interpreter will watch and put it into a more native sign. Um, since hearing interpreters, um, unless you're CODA, not your native language. So, because uh, deaf people, their native language is ASL, um, they are the ones who put it in a more native version. Of sign language. Um, this is very typical with hurricanes and snowstorms. There is when um, there was a big blizzard that hit New York, and a deaf interpreter uh, did that a few years ago. Um, so that kind of is what it means to be a certified deaf interpreter. Um, oh, and describe what this may look like. And I did that. Okay. Um, well, that is my answer to question number two. And yeah, thank you. Bye, guys.